Most of my research has been focused on mescaline analogs and to a certain extent uh, LSD analogs. I've done a little work with DMT and some of the analogs in particular. Um, I think the first time I really got involved with DMT more extensively was my interaction with uh, Dr. Strassman when he was at University of New Mexico in working with him to help bring the protocol forward and then making the DMT for the actual study. We've had some interest in DMT. The main problem with those kinds of drugs is that what we know is that there are very few modifications that you can make to the molecule and they retain their activity. Whereas if we look at mescaline analogs, you can make literally hundreds of transformations in the structure and those compounds retain their activity in some sense or another. Whereas with DMT, there aren't too many things you can do to the molecule and it loses its activity. So you're pretty constrained in terms of what you can do. Uh, we have some, done some work looking at the actual brain receptor, which is called the serotonin 2A receptor. The brain receptor that's the target for these, we've published a couple studies where we've tried to understand how these uh, DMT analogs activate those different uh, receptors compared with things like LSD or mescaline. But the focus of my own work has not been really heavy in the DMT tryptamine area, primarily because we, we know there just aren't a lot of things you can do to explore the chemistry that gives you molecules that are interesting when, you, when you've changed them.